Welcome. I'm Halcyon, and this is Hug Nation. This week I've been listening to a audiobook about coaching. And trainings about coaching and industries around coaching training sometimes grate me in the wrong way. When I hear people talk about getting your next six-figure client and masterminds and and the 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 business of selling training to people is it, it raises red flags to me sometimes you know if someone is saying hey come to my seminar and I'll teach you how to make a fortune in real estate it's like if you make a fortune in real estate why are you selling real estate training why aren't you making a fortune in real estate altruism perhaps I'm not saying that there isn't, but it just makes me go, wait a minute. I have some issues around the discussion of money, and I have some wariness and some discernment that when, when, when people are talking about big earnings and things. And that's not entirely healthy. A little bit, but I recognize that that's something that I need to to work through my fears and distrust and so that I can open myself to more abundance and financial riches. Because what I really want is a lair in a mountain filled with gold and crowns and doubloons. And since my pirate ship makes me really sick to my stomach, I've totally given up on my, uh, you know, Viking raids plan to steal the riches of the coastal cities, although I hear Laguna Beach has got lots of doubloons, but I am off track. So I'm listening to this book about coaching and about the the, the authors are this super confident, very, uh, I'm, uh, they, 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 they sound believable and they're talking about their, their clients that they charge, you know, $70,000 a year per client and, and um, and each time I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And near the end of this book, he talks about the experience of, is your client pain more than they're comfortable? Because that's important. And all of a sudden, all of these awarenesses started going through me, and I started to, to think about times that I have spent more than I was comfortable and how that affected my appreciation and my commitment to whatever it was, whether it was a you know, piece of equipment that I then made sure that I protected or whether it was a training or coaching. And I went through times in my life when I stretched my edge of what was comfortable in terms of payment. Uh, last year, I hired a coach to help me write a book and they did many of the things that this the book that I'm reading is training about how to ask for a lot and how to convince or prepare, not just convince but to show the the client why this is going to be transformative and and how priceless the transformative experience can be and not to think of it in terms of like hourly wages and how many hours what's what does it cost per hour but instead what at the end of six months would that be worth x amount of dollars to you and i was like actually yes it would and then afterwards went that's way more than i thought i was gonna but i did it and I stuck to it and I honored this agreement because I had committed to it with the energy of the resources of that money. And the year before, I committed to a, uh, a mastermind group and it was more money than I w- felt comfortable with. But it was super rewarding and I th- and then thinking back at the mastermind that I did, which was a, a weekly call. Uh, with a group of people and the coaching for the book were both experiences that profoundly increased my productivity and profoundly made me move forward in the things that I wanted to do. And as someone who is so dependent on discipline and my self-starting and doing, you know, getting myself to do what I think I should do every day, those periods of time were the best that I've done. So, Yes, it was totally worth it. 
And then I think back, uh, I did, I hired a coach last year at one point to help me with a project and I wasn't super sure where I was going with the project and the contract that we worked out was within my comfort level, not beyond my comfort level, within my comfort level. And guess what? It fizzled. It fizzled. I did not push to finish the project and I, I, it was not enough of an investment in myself for me to make it happen. Now, luckily, that coach reached out to me this year and said, hey, I'm really not okay with how that ended. In fact, I've changed my entire coaching program based on our failure. So let's start back up, use the credit of that last program that we were doing, and I'll get you started with the new way I do it. And if you like it, then we'll continue. And it's it's a big head change for me. I, I did have the awareness that it is important to invest. I've had experiences where uh, online I've, I've, I've wanted to get back into coaching at times. I've had periods of times when I coached uh, and I wanted to get back into it. And so I wanted to practice. And so I put online, hey, is anybody like a free coaching session? And of the you know six people that signed up, three of them either canceled or no-showed. And I was like, okay. <laughs> A value of zero is valued at zero. And so asking for higher dollars is less about my greed or my desire to gouge or my, my needs as much as saying, will you honor this process? Will you commit enough to this process to to push yourself and financially is a huge way to do that. It's time as well. It's, and, and, and it's the same thing. Like, you know, one of the reasons why you pay for a monthly gym membership is because you don't, it's, you, going to the gym should feel less painful than that feeling at the end of the month when you're like, Oh God, I wasted another $200 this month by not going to the gym. And so it's an interesting shift as I'm realizing I have these conflicting opinions about judgment towards people who ask for a lot of money. And then now kind of shifting and realizing, Oh, it's fine if people say, no, I don't want to pay for that. But if somebody is willing to pay for it, then they are saying, I am ready to commit to this. Now, the other side of that is that you have to deliver and you have to provide a service of life transformation because that's priceless. And so as I was thinking about that and, and listening to the, a lot of you know this this thinking about coaching, thinking about, you know, asking for a lot for my services and my time, I started to realize I also had thoughts about doubting my value. And, and that fluctuates at different times in my life. And, you know, a lot of the time I'll admit, I believe my time is priceless. And I don't generally say yes to things that don't excite me. But something about asking for money gets me scared. And so I started thinking maybe th there is something about my personal self-worth and that I doubt my value. And some of that is I doubt the value that I can, like I'm, I don't consider myself a business coach. So I don't know how to turn around a business and, you know, re get their revenues up and sell more units or increase profitability. And I also was thinking about in terms of value that and then I started to think about my value. And I, I, I started to become aware that I, of a, 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 I don't know if it's a shift or a slipping, but I feel like I've become more concerned with entertaining than being an artist and being of service. Now, it's very, I'm, I'm, I'm nitpicking because I do believe that I am an artist and I do believe that I am at service or in service and I do believe that my process of inner work publicly is part of my art and part of my service. But there have been times in my life when I felt that in a deep way, in a calling way that is more profound than it is now. And I think that one of the, the reasons for this slight shift or slipping is the social media world 
is the likes and views and the whether I, I watch or count the views at all, there's still so many people that are competing for eyeballs, competing for views, that it's very difficult not to wonder what I'm doing wrong if I'm not doing as well as a peer or, or, or anyone. Um, then again, when I look at the most popular people on YouTube, it becomes pretty easy to recognize that uh, uh, quality does not necessarily uh, mean popularity. Not to judge, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. There's all sorts of uh, wonderful Logan Pauls in the world who, no, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna give that, that shock E. It, it, this is a whole digression and you know what, we're here together and we're, we'll, I'll go there. I was such a zealot and such an evangelist for the internet. You know, I grew up in a time when we had rabbit ears on our television and we had three channels and then we got a couple more channels then we got cable and but it was just such a limited avenue of of entertainment and of information all curated by this entertainment world this industry that was concerned about money if it can't get enough views it's not worth it, it because they can't sell the commercials and so it's it's all business and when I first discovered the internet, like 96, my first thought was, we can all have our own TV show. Uh, well, I, I actually said the, the words. I didn't go, Shah. I said, we could all have our own TV shows. And the bandwidth wasn't there. So we basically had our own brochures for the next 10 years. But now we can have our own TV shows. It's like a, it's like, like a no-brainer to, to, to kids nowadays. But that is revolutionary when we had you know ABC, NBC, CBS and then some public access stuff. So I was so excited by the internet for this reason. And then I'm like, finally, we will not depend on these gatekeepers of our entertainment to dumb us down and force us to watch crap. We will, have, we will be able to select the best of the best and these truly talented people who don't wanna play the games of the system will rise up and we will see the brilliance of our culture. But as democracy sometimes does, the most popular things are sometimes not the most brilliant. Sometimes they are the most bane and the most coarse and the most rude and the most uh, disappointing, I would say, sometimes to see what the masses really want if you let them choose. And I get it, I'm part of the masses. I, I watch plenty of crap, but the, the experiment of the internet was not necessarily a, uh, a proof of the brilliance of democracy. Crowdsourcing has not resulted in a magical genius of our culture. It's resulted in fake news and... Uh, okay, that was my digression coming back um, so I started thinking about uh, you know when I was so excited about the web and the internet to my own TV channel or whether it was my website or that I was I felt very called to to pursue my personal truth as a path of art I call myself a lifestyle artist and went down a bunch of paths, ended up, you know, kind of trailblazing in certain areas of, of digital worlds. And, uh, you know, that's what got me to Burning Man. And that's what got me uh, into worlds of industries that are taboo and, and really kind of pushing into these areas that were frontiers of, of, of our culture. And that process of pushing myself and that process of going inward and outward, and it, it, that was what was important to me. I, and I think I got to that point of pushing because I had failed when I tried to be popular. When I, try, I tried to do what I thought would make me popular, it was disappointing and it didn't work. So then I pursued truth with such like a, a, a drive. And then, lo and behold, that responded more to people because authenticity is beautiful. And over the years, 
not that I've abandoned my mission, but I feel like maybe I've softened in my conviction and I have more to lose now. I have a reputation. I have physical things. I've got, uh, you know, I, my body doesn't bounce back as well from adventures. And, uh, and so I'm, I'm not pushing as hard as an artist. And in, do, in, in that way, I don't think I am as much of, of service. And so that, I think, is affecting my feeling of value. And I, I think my, my current path and purpose, and I think maybe this is all of our current path and purpose, is, is to dig deep into that place where our art and our muse and our service are all magnified. Because whatever happens from that place has massive value to the world, whatever it is. If you are truly authentic, it will get you to a place of service and those actions will heal the world. And then if you ask for resources to somebody, that is worth a lot. And it's just a matter of finding the right appreciator of the gifts and the magic that you bring to this flawed and perfect planet. So this is partially personal pep talk, partially trying to figure this all in my head, trying to um, evolve to a place of more boldness. I've had the last couple years in a somewhat of a sabbatical type landscape where I, I had a lot of freedom. And I want to thank everyone who's been supporting me on Patreon for allowing that that window of sabbatical to stretch as long as possible. But that window is uh, rapidly coming to an end. And so the requirement to see myself of value so that I can boldly ask for a high-earning client or boldly say, this workshop is going to change your life and be okay if somebody says, oh my God, I can't believe you're charging that much. And I'll be like, okay, this isn't for you. I get so uncomfortable when somebody goes, what? They're wearing that? Uh, actually not wearing that. I've, I've, I crossed that bridge. But there is many things about living where I am deathly afraid of, of being judged by someone. Like if I, if I block, if I'm trying to park and there's people watching me at Parallel Park and, and, and I'm like blocking traffic as they're waiting for me. And I think people are going like, come on, you could, ugh. I, I heart, <laughs> I, I, I drive away. I can't do it. At least let me not commit to that. So far in my life experience, this has been a challenge for me. And it is something that I can work on. <clears throat> Maybe I should do that as an exercise. <laughs> I should go intentionally try to park in places that I can't fit into just so that I can block traffic and just like, hey, sorry, I'm doing my best. Um, because sometimes I look back and wish that I had the experience after college of being a door-to-door -door salesman. I know a number of people that did that. And the skill that you get, well, you get many skills from it, but the, I think that the pro one that profoundly affects your ability to succeed in life is being comfortable being rejected, being comfortable when people say no. I am not to that place right now. In fact, if you, if you want to help me practice and just, you know, just flood the comments with, you suck, you know, just this, you're not worth it, that'll be great for me. So just you know, keep them coming. Um, I need to get less fragile. I'm like a petunia. My nephews always say, Uncle John. Why are you so fragile? I say, ow! The, the, the art and the process that I've been going through for the last many, 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 many years is a combination of, well, it's, it's, a, it's been a very much an inward journey that I then share publicly. And my art has been very much about sharing my vulnerability and my path. And I think that for this next evolution to work, for this value to be to others, there has to be a a shift, not 100%, but a shift to helping other people have these transformations 
that I have been going through, helping people find their path of authenticity that then leads to feelings of self-worth and contentment and relationship success and business success and, and being that true self in the way that it does become the answer that is needed somewhere, helping people get from that place of trying to be the thing you're supposed to be. So it's the, the missionary work shall begin soon, I think. Woo! Woo! Nothing like a missionary to knock on your door. Everybody loves that, right? Yeah, this is going to be a piece of cake. Ugh. Well, it's going to be interesting, that's for sure. And I appreciate you being a part of this journey. <sighs> Thank you so much. I love you. Thank you for watching. Please hit like and subscribe and tell your friends and love yourself and give yourself a hug and marvel at the universe and, and, and like and subscribe and thank you. <laughs>